kuona hiyo gari maaskari walitoka wengi sana ndani ya hiyo gari nikachukuliwa na nikatubwa ndani ya hiyo gari It, it took a while before one began to realize that things weren't quite right. Wacha kuuzika kwanza hata sikujua. Sikujua. Mimi nilitumika kama skateboard. Anything that was very negative like that um you you tended to gloss over. You still wanted to believe in the in the, in the dream of independence. ni propaganda ilitengenezwa na chief inspector show eh hii ni propaganda alafu nikawa forced to sign hiyo statement hayo hata hiyo mambo ya kuwawa huyo mjumbe singeweza kujua na sikujua nilijulia kwa kini I mean I remember that uh, uh, in 63 uh, in Mombasa uh, at midnight dancing in Tronoka stadium and it was just joyous absolutely joyous you know Even as late as 1967 I remember there were places that we couldn't go as non whites We couldn't go. Forty-eight years ago, Kenya was an infant country when the first political assassination occurred. The man at the center of the killing, Piogama Pinto. Pinto strongly pushed for a better lifestyle for millions of poor Kenyans. As some felt it was the attempt to amass all the white man had left behind. Case files start now. As the country dusted itself from years of colonial rule, local politics was slowly taking shape. The country's leadership that had fought so hard to get rid of the colonial masters was split into two. Those who strongly believed in working for millions poor Kenyans and those who were seen to have merely taken over from where the white rulers had left off and consolidated their grip on power. In the city's Westlands area, an affluent suburb lived the family of Piogama Pinto, a Kenyan of Goan extraction. Pinto was described as a quiet man, a shrewd politician and a close associate of Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga at the time, Kenya's first vice president. In the central business district, quite different from the contemporary city that Nairobi is today, lived a young man, Kisilu Mutua. Mutua at the time, 21 years old, ran a successful manual job of selling fresh produce. The city had very few people. Kenya was a young nation, just two years old. Nilikuwa na mkokoteni yangu mbili na kila saa kumi ya usiku nilikuwa nikiamuka na kwenda nachukua mkokoteni yangu ilikuwa ikikaa pale hii soko mnaita KCPU siku hizo tulikuwa tukiita missing line kuna muindi alikuwa na aliitwa kufatanisha na hiyo jina kukipambasuka kabisa ndio natoa mkokoteni yangu kijana yangu anachukua yake anateremsha na mimi nachukua yangu teremka huko pande ya Lalimawe tunashungusha saa sita ndio nilikuwa nikimaliza kazi yangu mpaka saa kumi ndio nitaamka niende missing line kwenda kupata mboga nyingine fresh ndio naweza kushungusha on the other side of town pio gama pinto was a perfect family man most of the time dropping off his wife to work in the morning at the time a private secretary to a popular politician heading back home before leaving for work his house servants describe pinto as a dad who loved to drive from his basement parking with his 18 month old daughter drop her off outside his main gate before heading to work pinto at the time was a member of parliament but that dramatically changed on the 24th of february 1965 
Pito had dropped off his wife at work, drove home in his white sub motor vehicle, had breakfast, picked up his 18-month-old baby, placed her at the back of the car and dropped the main gate. Pinto did not have a chance to say goodbye to his daughter. Gunmen emerged from nowhere, fired four times, all shots directed at the driver's seat. Pinto slumped on the steering wheel. The life of a politician had been cut short. The first political assassination in post-independent Kenya had just taken place. At the time, Patrick Shaw, a bully of a police officer, was a chief inspector of police. A respected figure in the dreaded Kenya police force that continued to operate two years after the colonial government got wind of the killing and got interested. Mutuwa Kisilu at the time says he had no idea such a prominent member of parliament had died. Ata, wacha kumujua. By then, kwanza, kitu naetwa kaseti, nilikuwa ata sisomi. Ya nini? Na nisaidia nini? Redio nilikuwa sisiki yanki. Ya nini? Itanifaa nini? That same day, two police officers, Africans, came looking for Mutuwa Kisilu. Kisilu says the two men from his community were known to him. Police were with him. One was called Koplo Mutiso, and one was called Koplo Maluki. Wow, they were able to find him, because every day, we were able to find him. We were able to find him, and we were able to find him, and we were able to find him, and we were able to find him. We were able to find him, and we were able to find him. Tulikuwa tukiishi hapo. Sasa, hawa mapolisi tulikuwa karibu kila siku. Tunakutana nao, naongea, ni watu tunajuana. Wakapanda juu bako kwa nyumba angu. Wakenda wakaniuliza, wakaambiwa, mimi nilikuwa hapa na nimeteremuka hapo inje saa hii. Si wakateremuka. Sasa hawa kuteremuka, wale nikuta na kama hali kama pale. Nasimama tu, chini saa moja, saa mbili usiku. Kupita, kupita, maruki sababu alikuwa ni mtu mwenye kitumbo, mwendo wake ilikuwa ni mwendo ya kinyonga, kinyonga, pole pole. Yeye, akiwa nyuma, mi kupinduka na muna hii, uzo yangu na yake ilipokutana. Uzo wake na yangu ilipokutana, akanambia ye kisilu, hebu kuja, kuna kitu na taa kuuliza wewe. Kisilu claims at the time the two police officers who had arrested him, had not informed him about the killing of Pio Gama Pinto, let alone where they had arrested him. Tulitembea, tukitembea pole pole. Si tunaongea tu maongezi ya kawaida. Tunatembea pole pole, tunatembea pole pole, kupika kwa hiyo gari. Kupika tu kulingana na hiyo kichochoro tu. Nikipinduka hivi kuona hiyo gari. Maaskari walitoka wengi sana ndani ya hiyo gari, nikachukuliwa na nikatupo ndani ya hiyo gari. Sikupeleka mbele. Sikupeleka kingi siwe. Hii mnaita sendu. Nipereko mpaka mangani. Nipereko mangani. Eh, hiliyana ni katuma nami ya seri. Kisilo told case files 48 years later that the two police officers left in the hands of a man-turned beast. Nipereko kwa Patrick Shaw. Nipereko kwa Patrick Shaw. Nipereko kwa Patrick Shaw. Nilisikia nasema, diyo huyu. Eh, diyo huyu. Dio huyu, dio huyu, dio huyu, dio huyu, dio huyu. Sasa wakani ugilia na marungu, wali mipika, wali mipika, wali mipika mikapote sabahamu. Kisilo claims Patrick Shaw did not ask him about the killing of Pio Gama Pinto. Instead he was locked up until late into the night when the same police officers, now in the company of Patrick Shaw, asked him to show them the place where a Goan had been killed in Westlands. Walienda wakaniweka kwa gunia. Dani ya seli wakaniweka kwa gunia. Wakanipiga tuwa wa zanana na mishu ni wanaweka. Wananiweka kwa gari wakanipeleka mpaka kwa maremu. Wakanituwa dani ya gari. Kushuka dani ya gari. Maluki alitembea kama ananishika mutomo. Haka niuliza three times. Ni hapa. Ni hapa. Mara hatatu ni kama uliza ni hapa pana nini. Unaona? 
alipoona si wajibu wanavyotaka si wakanirudisha ngali ya ngali nikapeleka ni polisi Kisilo was later returned into the same cell. A decision was made to have him charged with the murder of Pio Gama Pinto. His co-accused was Chege Thuo. Kisilo was 21 years old, while Chege had just turned 19 years old. In a trial that saw a judge and a chief justice prosecute a case, Kisilo had entered Kenya's books of history, being the first man alongside his co-accused to face charges of assassination. Mwezi wa pili, wa tatu, wa ine. Hiyari yangu ikaanza. Hiyari niliendelea naye mwezi wa ine yote na mwezi wa tano ikawa ni kesi ya kujibu. Case files pieces together trial that had so many loopholes and one that pointed to a possible cover up. A cover up of a bold murder of Pio Gama Pinto, a vibrant politician and strategist at the time said to be leaning east. Margaret Kibichu, at the time a house elf of the Pintos told the high court sitting in Nairobi that on the material day, she was the person who placed Gamma Pinto's youngest daughter at the back of his car. As it was tradition, Pinto will drive from the front door into the gateway, ask the house girl to take back the child into the house. That day, however, she did not have the chance. A man greeted Pinto in Swahili. He shot him three times. The house help told the court she did not see anyone running away. A scene of crime detective who arrived at Pinto's house moments after Pinto had been killed would later tell the court that he collected four live bullets from Pinto's car. Four other spent cartridges were collected from the ground near the car. Of all the witnesses who appeared before the trial judge, none placed Kisilu Mutua at the scene of the shooting. But one witness positively identified Chege Thuo because of a unique vein he had on his forehead. Hakuna mdo alisimama kasema ni yona Kisilu akibu wa gama vintu. Hakuna. Hakuna. Wacha hivo. Niliyona mutu kama zura kama Kisilu. Hakuna. Hata mmoja. Sipokuwa polisi. Polisi anaeleza nilimshika saa fulani, mahali fulani, tukaenda fulani, tukakaa hivi, tukaenda hivi, tukaenda hivi. Hmm? Isipokuwa huyu muuaji anaitwa Patrick Sho, aliandika ndani ya statement yangu ile ambayo alikuja kwenye force. Mimi ndio nimeandika ni sign kwamba mimi ndio niliwapeleka kwa marehemu maremu mwenyewe si mbili na kuna isha, kuna ushahidi ina proof vile kwamba mimi huyu mtu sikumjua wao ndio walinipeleka kwa it was patrick show sensational linked kisilu mtua to the murder of pio gama pinto show appeared in court with a statement he claimed had been signed by kisilu mtua inducting himself in the murder of pio gama pinto Show told the court that Kisilu confessed to being at the main gate to Pio Gama Pinto's house when the politician was shot dead. The statement that Case Files has obtained 48 years later shows indeed Kisilu was at the scene of the killing that morning. The statement which Kisilu will later deny he ever took part in its drafting says their plan was to threaten a man and not to kill Pio Gama Pinto. The man coincidentally was Pio Gama Pinto who then had killed Pio Gama Pinto and why. It was for the people. If the system had worked for the people, he didn't have to be against it, right? You know? Um, and uh, after independence time, people like, uh, you know, like Jomo Kenyatta and uh, all these others, they were all comrades. 23 is the number of people who appeared as witnesses before the trial judge. None of them say they saw Kisilu Mutua at the scene of the killing. It was Kisilu's statement that gave him in. One of the police officers who arrested Kisilu told the court that the young man had been arrested for other matters when he voluntarily decided to confess about Pio Gama Pinto's murder. 
The trial judge pressed the prosecution to explain how they had reached a decision to pick up Kisilu Mutua for questioning just hours after Piogama Pinto had died. Police investigators told the court that got wind that Kisilu had planned to hire a taxi to Westlands. Chief Justice Sir John Enley put Kisilu Mutu on his defense for the murder of the slain Westlands member of parliament, Piogama Pinto. Chegethuo, the man a witness had positively picked out of a police parade, was set free. Reason? Chege and like Kisilu had denied being in Westlands when the murder occurred. The judge, in fact, went ahead and questioned the eyewitness's ability to remember face 10 days later. A ballistics expert who dusted Piogama Pinto's car for fingerprints told the trial judge there were a total of 10 palm prints on Gama Pinto's vehicle. Seven could not be identified and the three that could did not belong to either the suspects. The judge appeared to rely on a statement that Kisilu told the court he was forced to pen and sign. The statement talks of a trip involving a driver, Che a man referred to as Sami, and Kisilu. A man identified as Marco Nyango, a trade unionist with officers in town, had hired Kisilu and Chege to threaten a Goan in Westlands area. Ni statement ili tengenezwa na informa. Kwa sawa mtu wa mewawa na ili nazima ipatikane ha mtu ama siye ama ndie. When the group arrived in Westlands, Kisilu the statement said was shocked and deeply frightened. The two are not told him there were plans to kill the Goan who turned out to be Pio Gama Pinto. Sami, a man who was arrested way before Kisilu Mutua was, was never charged in court. His records did not exist and police officers who turned up to testify were unable to tell the court where, how and by whom Sami was released. Yet this is the man Kisilu had claimed pulled the trigger. Coincidentally, Sami was held at Pangani police station the same day Kisilu Mutua was arrested. In July 1965, the jury reached a verdict. Court assessors who acted as a jury returned a not guilty verdict for both Kisilu Mutua and Chegethuo. The judge disagreed with the court assessors, saying Kisilu was guilty of murder, but agreed with the same jury that Chegethuo was an innocent man. In his ruling, Justice John Enley told a packed courtroom that the court might have concluded the trial without having the real culprit before it. He then turned to Kisilu Mutu and told the 21-year-old then that the fact that he had gone to Westlands in the company of the Slayers demonstrated he knew what will transpire. What he was telling was the move by the trial judge to ask the two police officers who arrested Kisilu to testify afresh during the trial. The officers had made several mistakes in the earlier statements when being cross-examined by Kisilu's defense counsel. The judge handed Kisilu the maximum death sentence. Kisilu shouted at the judge, I did not kill, I did not kill, before being led down into the basement cells of the high court. The real killers of the flamboyant politician were never known. Kisilu, judge, akitua judgment yake, alisema wewe, siku kumu wewe, kwa kuua na kuhukumu kwa kuhusika na wale uwa sasa wale uwa ni kina nani wale uwa ni kina nani uja ni hukumu kufa kwa sababu ya kuhua nime kuhukumu kufa 
kwa sababu ya kuhusika na walioua waliohusika ni kina walioua ni kina nani those whose hands were strongly linked to the killing of the politician were given a safe passage kisilu was the fall guy but the fact that he placed himself at the scene of the murder a statement he denied he penned gave him in ile statement niliandikiwa na show eh niliweka kidole yangu baada ya kuweka kidole yangu nikawa nimekanyanga makaa na kuweka kidole kwangu sikuweza kwa sababu ya uwezo yangu nilikuwa forced kufanya hivyo na hata macho nilikuwa sioni kwa sababu nilikuwa nimepigwa macho mpaka ikawa hata sioni Kisilu was held at the notorious block G cell at the committee maximum prison it was here inmates on death row were held as they awaited their turn at the gallows kaka huko nikililia mungu yangu mungu ambaye simuoni lakini alhamdulillah sababu alisikia kilio yangu sikufanywa walivyotaka sasa nikakaa kinyonga nikakaa kinyonga kutoka mwezi wa 7 mpaka disemba ile watu nilikuta huko watu 44 walipepetwa yote nikiwa hapo mimi peke yangu nilitoka nikaambiwa kwenda hivi mtu ya mwisho alipokuwa anabakia mmoja ndio nilisikia naitwa kweli siku hiyo niliuliza Mungu Mungu kweli umekubali ni nyongo lakini wewe ndio mwenye uwezo lakini nikifikiria nateremka hivi nikaambiwa kwenda hivi nilikuwa nafaa kwenda kunyongwa eh lakini siku hiyo nikaambiwa pita toka bila bila pingu mkononi not a single witness linked kisilu the mad of pure gamma pinto the only witness was a statement he allegedly penned by the time kisilu left prison after presidential pardon in 2000 a lot had changed building ilikuwa kubwa ni hii hapa next to to nini for reader hiyo hiyo building caltex hiyo building hiyo ndio ilikuwa mrefu nilishangaa sababu watu nilikuta wamekuwa wanyama sio sio wale nilikuta sababu nyakati hizo watu yote walikuwa ni brothers ningeweza kuwa ukiwa rafiki yangu ningeweza kutoka huko reserve nikae kwako mwezi sita saa hii hata brother yako hawezi kama siku mbili today kisilu lives in a shanty on a road reserve in bahati area in the city sawa maisha yangu naishia kule nikifanya kazi ya serikali na mwisho nimetoka nimekuta nimechelewa sasa ni na family hii family ndaifanyia nini nguvu ya kufanyia hiyo kazi natoa wapi na imepotelea huko at the city's parkland cemetery it takes a caretaker to show you where the remains of the leftist politician lies today to learn uh, from vendor's life his utter simplicity his humility he never sought anything for himself his hard work this guy used to work till 2 in the morning sleep for a couple of hours at 4 5 in the morning he would be back at his desk writing memoranda the real killers of pure gamma pinto are still at large nimeishi maisha ya ya thick 36 years bila kujua dunia inakaa namna gani na nilizaliwa katika hali gani eh? nilikuwa kijana chukukisi kama huyu maisha yangu yote mpaka umri umetoka huko nikifanya kazi ya serikali and the mystery continues on the death of the first kenyan to be failed by an assassin's bullet The family of Pio Gama Pinto relocated to Canada where they now live. 48 years later, the killing of Pio Gama Pinto stands concluded by the courts but unresolved by the police. Denson Sarigo for case files.